A morning that began with such joy, winning prize money in a competition, turned into pure horror as two innocent souls lost their lives at the hands of someone they knew, someone who was trusted by their family. For almost three years, the court case was postponed time and time again, and it seemed like justice would never be served. Although the 18-year-old girl who was killed had her life come to a tragic end, her dream of being well-known one day by many would be manifested into reality, just not in the way she had ever imagined or hoped. A life cut short and a life brutally ended. This is the tragic case of the murders of Jesse Hess and Chris Latachan. And this is day 12 of 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. Jessie Hess was born on the 25th of October 2000 to Lance Hess and Brenda Miles. When she was three years old, her parents divorced. They shared custody of Jessie until her mom moved to the US. Around 2017, Jessie went to live with her grandparents and her aunt. Within school, she was well-liked and attended Tableview High School. After matriculating, she decided that she wanted to be a preacher or missionary. And so she had enrolled at the University of the Western Cape to study towards a degree in theology. On the 30th of August 2019, the day started off on a high with exciting news as Jessie had won 5,000 Rand on the Heart 104.9 FM breakfast show. She said on air that she had been saving money to do something special for her grandparents and her aunt. She had further stated, They are very special to me because they took me in when I was in high school already and they have been looking after me. They work so hard and are sacrificing so much for Just me. Just 30 minutes after winning though, her father Lance had tried to call her to congratulate her, but her phone was off. Little did he know that her phone was off because the most heinous crime was occurring at the Latakhan Hess home. That morning, her grandmother and aunt had left for work, so it was just Jessie and Chris at home. Jessie had been preparing for a sermon that she was scheduled to give that night, and her grandfather Chris was watching soccer. Whilst Jessie was in the bathroom, two men had knocked on the door of the apartment. Her grandfather had opened the door to the two men, as he knew one of that them. That man had then asked for something to eat, and when Chris, her grandfather, had turned his back on them, that very same man had attacked him, his arm around his neck until he lost consciousness. Jessie heard the commotion and came out to this disturbing chaos. At this point, the leader of the two men, rugby tackled Jesse, knocking her to the ground. He then took his shoelaces and tied up her hands, commanded her to stand up and walk to the bedroom. She was then asked for the pin to her bank card, which she gave the man. He asked her where the sellotape was and he tied her up, stuffing a pillowcase and sock into her mouth before taping it closed with brown packing tape. He then proceeded to wrap her head in tape two and the belt of a gown. In the other room, her grandfather had met the same fate. Jessie was only 18 years old. Chris was 85. The family would come to check on the two after the radio silence to find the shocking scene. How do you tell a woman that she has lost both her husband and her beloved and only granddaughter in one horrific event? That very same night, the family moved out of the one-bedroom council unit, taking only their clothing. As the days came and passed with no leads, a crowdfunding campaign was started to hire a private investigator. More than 66,000 rand was raised. And then finally, there was a break. Three months after the murder, a person of interest was identified. But the worst part, the family would receive the news that this potential individual was a relative and someone that Jesse had feared. His name was David von Buch, and he was Jesse's second cousin on her mother's side. Jesse's feelings towards David were evident as later cell phone records uncovered text between her boyfriend and herself, where she had described David as someone that used to be a family friend that takes and is involved in gangs. His accomplice was Taslim Buenki Ambrose, who, if judging from his previous charges, had a problem. And so after the investigation was conducted, the trial would go to court. In the trial that would follow, David von Boeven was convicted and found guilty in the Western Cape High Court of two counts of murder, two counts of robbery with aggravating circumstances, as well as charges of sex assault, fraud, and theft. He was handed down two life sentences for the murders of Jesse Hess and Chris Lass. He received eight years for the sex assault of Jesse and three years for fraud. As life sentences were imposed, his sentences will run concurrently. Taslim Ambrose was acquitted of the murder, sexual assault, fraud and theft charges. He was convicted and found guilty on two counts of robbery with aggravating circumstances and was sentenced to six years for being an accessory to the robbery, with the two counts being taken as well. Every year, the Hess and Latakhan family remember Chris and Jesse by celebrating their lives, their passions, and their favorite things. And like one of Jesse's favorite things, sunflowers, I implore you, the listener, to always stand tall, even in your darkest days, and I wish you the strength to always be able to face and live in the beauty of the light. There is so much more to this case, which I've covered in detail, that you can find on my YouTube channel, Bala Monsoon, or by clicking the link in my bio.